Hello, uh, my name is Edward Finn, and I'm here to introduce you to Dr. Rodney Brooks. He's the a physicist and the author of a book called Fields of Color, and he's going to tell us what's in this book. So, Dr. Brooks, can you tell us something about this book and why you have written it? Sure. Um, by the way, I want to add that the subtitle of the book, The Theory That Escaped Einstein, was your idea, was your suggestion, and at one time it was the title, but when I introduced the color analogy, it became the subtitle. But to answer your question, uh, when I retired, I realized that a theory that I had learned a long time ago at Harvard called quantum field theory had pretty much escaped people's minds, especially in the outside community and also in the physics community. Mm -hmm. And quantum mechanics was ruling the roost and causing people to suffer, not, 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 understand, not understanding physics, feeling that it was incomprehensible, and relativity was hard to understand. In the meantime, this wonderful theory, quantum field theory, was being completely overlooked and ignored. And I decided I would try to do something about well, it. Now tell me, what's the difference between quantum mechanics, everybody knows what quantum mechanics is, and what you said, quantum field theory? Quantum field theory. And it's a very big difference. Uh, quantum mechanics is a theory of particles. The very name mechanics implies that we're talking about objects, localized objects that act, acted on by forces. Quantum field theory is a theory that depicts the world, a world where there are no particles at all. The world is made of fields. Now, fields is not an easy thing to comprehend. I know that I struggled with it as a physicist. Probably you did. It's not an easy, in fact, the physics community struggled with it since the notion right, was well, introduced. Now, tell me, for the audience, what in the world do you mean by this field? Yeah. Try to give us a little better explanation. Well, I, I try to answer that question in my book. Uh, a field, the definition is easy to say. It's a property of space. Quantum field theory describes space with properties, different kinds of properties. Now, it's very, the first field introduced into physics was the electromagnetic field, and it was introduced 150 years ago by Faraday and it was quite an earth-shaking concept. Uh, but it's not easy to picture in something as abstract as space with properties. One of the, thing, one of the features of my book is that I, uh, and this is why it's called Fields of Color, is that I use a color analogy. Most people can picture the sky is blue, uh, this is green, so we can sort of picture space as having a color. So what I did was I assigned an arbitrary color for each of the six fields to help people form a mental image. But still in all, it's not an easy concept. You have to give up on the idea of particles. No more quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is, in quantum field theory, is just a kind of limiting case of the field equations. Do you want to go on a little bit you mentioned the fact that there are six fields. Yeah. Do uh, you want to just mention what these six fields are? I mean, I know particles. I know protons and electrons and, and tables and things like that. They're real things. I can feel these things. But you're saying there are only six fields? Well, there are only six fields that we know for sure. There could be more. Okay. And there may be more with some of the things that are going on with dark energy, for example. But the six known fields are four force fields and two matter fields. Mm. The four force fields are gravity, the oldest field known, electromagnetic field, then there are two nuclear fields, the strong field and the weak field. And most people don't know too much about them, and they don't really need to. Uh, and I should mention that these, uh, the strong field is an effective field which has some internal structure involving quarks and gluons, but forget that. You know, the point is there are effectively four force fields, and that's not that difficult to picture. But the idea that matter itself, that an electron, that a proton, is nothing more than an excitation of a field is not so easy. Mm. And there are two matter fields which I picture as being red and yellow, and one of them is the heavy matter field, the baryon field. The other is the light 
matter field, the lepton field. Okay. I hope some of you in the audience know what he's talking about right now. But anyway, well, you, you I know, I know. But now, you say this field picture that you're describing, that there are only six fields in all of this business. How does this resolve the problems that come up with quantum mechanics? I know there are, you mentioned that there are paradoxes that, that you call them, or enigmas Einstein. or whatever. Einstein's enigmas, right. Well, I, I believe there are three basic reasons for choosing the field theory. And you don't have to choose it. It's a matter of choice. But the idea, the basic idea of physics is to find the best theory you have that explains the facts, the theory that makes the most sense, and use it. And that's what I am claiming for quantum field theory. And one of the features is you, that you asked about is that there are these enigmas in quantum mechanics. Even Richard Feynman, one of its outstanding spokespeople, says the theory is bizarre. He says, leave your common sense behind you if you want to understand quantum okay. mechanics. You have the uncertainty principle. In quantum field theory, the uncertainty principle becomes trivial. A field is spread out. An electron is a particle that might be here and might be there, might have this momentum, might have that momentum. That doesn't make sense. Feynman is correct. But a field that is spread out is not just could be here or could be there. It's here and here and here. So that, that problem, for example, is resolved. The relativity paradoxes that even the supposed smartest person in the world Marilyn Vos Savant says can't be understood by ordinary people becomes crystal clear when you understand that, Matt, that the world is made of fields. Okay, now you're saying that this resolves all of these paradoxes, the quantum field theory that you've been describing resolves all the paradoxes of quantum mechanics and even some of relativity. Yes. Uh, does it do anything else for us? other than just resolve oh, yeah. problems? Yeah. There are two other reasons that I think it's, it should be latched onto and spread, uh, to spread the news that this is the, the right theory. Um, it produces some amazing successes. Uh, the chief one in my book, I have quite a few of them, uh, E equals mc squared, for example, becomes a trivial result of quantum field theory and an understandable result. But the one that I'll mention the most uh, that's of the most interest now is the explanation of the Higgs boson, which has been in the news because of the uh -huh. recent discovery or measurement of it. And in quantum field theory, it's not a Higgs boson, a particle. It's a Higgs field. And it's only the field interpretation that explains the function of the Higgs field, the mechanism of the Higgs field, in producing a ma an effective mass of other particles. I, so that alone is reason to say nature is made of fields, not particles. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that when you read the general newspaper where we talk about the God particle, yes. that the people in the newspaper, they keep using God particle, Higgs particle, and so on. But I observe when I go and read a little deeper and get the scientists talking about it, they are indeed talking about the field, well, not the particle anymore. It's interesting. Exactly. So all that big machine we made up over there in, in Switzerland, it didn't find a particle? Well, it, it found what's called a quantum of the field. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's true, there are other physicists who are making, trying to make this clear. But unfortunately, even in the physics community, you'll find that quantum mechanics rules a roost most places. And quantum field theory is being promulgated by just the minority of physicists. I think eventually the tide, and I hope eventually the tide will turn. But the Higgs boson is, the, the God particle, is a quantum of the Higgs field. And a quantum is a kind of excitation of, of fairly localized, but, but not completely localized, a spread out field in this underlying field that fills the space. Wow. Okay. So we have to be careful what we read in the newspapers from now on, right? Now, it there's sounds one more like reason. it. Oh, there's please. one more reason that I think is very important also. Uh, although it's not as strong as the other reasons. The other reasons, the successes 
of quantum field theory, the explanation, the resolution of the paradoxes, it makes sense. These are very strong. But there's also a philosophical uh, question here that I think is important to some people. If you believe in a world made of particles, that's not very satisfying because you have to ask, what are the particles made of? What are the electrons and protons? How big are they? What are they made of? Some people say they're point particles. How can you picture a point particle? To say that the world is made of fields, six fields, that obey simple equations that interact with each other and influence each other. Once you become comfortable with the idea of a field, which admittedly isn't easy, it seems to me that you are getting to the most basic level you can of understanding what the universe is made of. So I think it's more satisfying philosophically than the idea of particles. Listen, we don't have an infinite amount of time here. Would you recommend your book? I certainly would recommend your book because I have read it and it's good for the layperson in particular, but even for us old fogs who are sitting around. Now, how can someone get your book? Uh, all they have to do uh, is uh, they can do a search by the title and the author. It's available on Amazon, it's available at Barnes and Noble. And I have a website that I think people might want to take a look at. It's called quantumfieldtheory.net with hyphens. You have to say quantum-field-theory.net. And if you go to that website, you can take a look inside the book. You can see, read parts of it. You can get more information about it and how to buy it. Thank you, Dr. Brooks. This has been a wonderful interview. Good day.